if this was a static bottom pressure, and a lot of times when you close a well in, the liquid can be pushed back out into the formation. In this well, the bottom of pressure is just simply uh, the surface pressure plus the weight of the gas column. But if this is the way it was at producing conditions, then when you shut it in and it filled up to here, it filled up with whatever oil and water that the well was making, and you'd have that much oil and that much water in the well, and that's how you'd have to calculate the pressures. If you had some oil in the well while you were producing it and you shut it in, then it would have that oil sitting up on top of whatever came in, and it, you'd have that fill up. So you got some calculations to, to do. Let's say the pump's high in the well. Then you've got oil and water below the pump. But I don't believe I have said that above the, the tubing perforations is always oil because water will settle out and be below that and oil will accumulate above the tubing perforations. It'll all be oil. Here, you've got oil and gas, oil and water below. When it fills up, that stuff goes up to the top. And then whatever filled in, that goes up too. So you have to calculate how much oil and the rest of it will be water. Here, if you've got some oil on top, it'll be sitting over here. And whatever oil and water was down here, some of that oil will come up here, and then some more fluids came in. Well, you've got a, some calculations to do. We've got a paper that describes how to do all that called Analyzing Well Performance 15, and you can download it. Uh, on the back of it, there's a couple of forms. You just fill out those forms, and, and you can use it for calculating the producing bottom hole pressure and or the static bottom hole pressure. We have a software program called AWP 2000 that's on Lynn's disk that we're handing out. And you input these numbers that we've talked about, and it calculates the bottom hole pressure for you. And it works both on the producing and the static bottom hole pressure. It'll work on both of them. We had the, the strip chart recorder since the 60s was when we came out with ours. And then in the late 80s, the laptop came out. Well, the laptop gives you a different idea of what to do. A laptop, you can put in a laptop data about the well you can shoot the fluid level, and then it'll draw you a picture just like this of the well, and it'll put the water, the oil level in it. And you, you can do that. I mean, somebody knows what you're doing. I can't, but somebody knows how to write software. And then if you put a, a pressure gauge up here, you could measure what the pressure's doing. And if the pressure's building up, well, you better put some bubbles in this oil down here because there are bubbles down there. The only way bubbles can be down there is if gas is coming in here, bubbling up through the liquid and coming up into this area where it increases the pressure. So if the pressure's increasing, you can even determine the rate at which gas is coming in. And if we're going to do that, why don't we measure motor power? We've been trying to figure out whether you ought to run them clockwise or counterclockwise. Well, let's look at, at how much torque is on the gearbox when you run one way versus the other, how much you change the lows on the upstroke and downstroke, which affects your pump capacity. It will affect that. Is it harder to lift the rods or the weights? Well, by measuring motor power, you can convert that into torque and you calculate gearbox torque. So, good night, let's do that. And then um, on the dynamometer, we make load cells that attaches to the polished rod and very accurately measures the load on the polished rod. We also have one that works within 5% or so that you clip onto the uh, polished rod and it measures the change in diameter. It also has an accelerometer in it and you can get a surface card and pump card and do a dynamometer analysis. But by switching over to a computer, that kind of opened a whole new ball game for us. And we decided to do that. And you can put data about the well in there and it remembers it. You know, you put the name and the data and man, it's got it. When you shoot a well, instead of getting this piece of paper, you get a screen that shows a data like this. Here's where the shot went 
well before we shock the well. Here we released some gas into the well, bango, signal took off, went down the hole, bounced back. Each one of those a little bounce back off of a collar and their big bounce is the liquid level. But had there been a liner or a, or a casing leak or anything else in here, it would have shown up. Anything that changed the cross-sectional area of the annulus. How do we get the depth? Well, we, the software tries to pick up these little old kicks, collar kicks, out of one second of data. And it picks them up, and I like it. And, you know, if I didn't like that, the program gives you the ability to change it. But that gives you the liquid level depth. You have the ability, since you have the data, you can filter it. And just like if you've got a TV set and you're watching the Rams and you'd rather watch the Cowboys, you can filter that data and switch to a different channel. We can filter that data since we've already got it and we can make the collars look better. And while we're doing this, we're also measuring casing pressure because we want to see how much gas is coming in out of the reservoir, flowing up through the liquid level if there is a high one and aerating it. That allows us to present this display. Over here, this is what the well makes right now. It makes 29 oil. We've got uh, 300 and 400 feet of liquid above the pump but it's got some gas coming up through it. The casing pressure built up 0.3 PSI in two minutes. Got some gas coming up through it. It's 79% uh, liquid. And we can calculate a bottom hole pressure of 219. And our reservoir pressure is 1700. That number's small compared to that. I'd like to have it below 172 but 218 ain't bad. So we're getting uh, wherever it is on here. We're getting 95.9% .9 of the liquid that's available. That's what we went out there to the well for. How efficiently are you producing the well? Now I'm going to look at the motor and I'm going to look at the gearbox and I'm going to look at everything else and I'm going to try to reduce rod failures and everything else, but really I want to get liquid out of the well, and I'm doing a pretty good job on the well of producing the reservoir. I might be running the thing the wrong way. Liquid level test, what's the depth at the top of the liquid level? What percentage of liquid exists in the annulus? What's the gas-free liquid level height? Is gas flowing up the annulus? At what rate? Mike's would like to know.